it will take me around uh, 27 hours. But won't you sleep then the whole race? Ah, no, I won't sleep. You just need to train and I think we were born to run. De afgelopen jaren hebben vrouwen meerdere ultramarathons gewonnen. Van andere vrouwen. En van de mannen. Hoe kan dat? Precies die vraag onderzoeken wetenschappers tijdens de UTMB in een pop-up lab in Chamonix. So Guillaume, what are you testing here? We are testing uh, what we call neuromuscular fatigue. So um, the fatigue is not only located in the muscle, it, also, it can also be in the brain. So that's why we call that neuromuscular. So there is the neural system and, and the muscle. Why do you want to know this? Because I guess it's important to understand the, the physiological consequences of such an event. And particularly in this study, we're interested in, the, in comparing men and women. Because uh, this is one of the rare disciplines where women can uh, outrun all the men. And uh, it happened like only in 2019, it happened, uh, to my knowledge, at least three times. So wow. it's, uh, it's not like that rare. Of, of course, males are stronger, faster, they have a higher VO2 max, they have, a, they have more capacity to transport oxygen in the blood etc uh, they have less fat in average so in theory it, it, it's it's almost impossible that a woman uh, win but it happens so we need to understand why ik ga langs bij een van de topfavorieten oh tomorrow i will do a very long race it's 100 uh, miles so it's something like 170 kilometers all around the mont blanc so going from chamonix in france to chamonix in france <laughs> so let's have a look on the map actually we need two maps So the, the start will be on this map. So this is the Mont Blanc and this is Chamonix. And yes. we run all around the Mont Blanc. Hardloopwedstrijden van meer dan 42 kilometer heten ultramarathons. En de UTMB is de belangrijkste ter wereld. 171 kilometer lang, met meer dan 10.000 hoogtemeters. It will cross uh, three different countries. So starting from France, going to Italy, Switzerland and back to France. Het is een lood en loodzware tocht. De meeste deelnemers zijn bijna twee dagen en nachten onderweg. Ultramarathons zijn een goudmijn voor wetenschappers. Zij kunnen mensen onderzoeken die vrijwillig helemaal kapot gaan. 171 kilometers. How, how many hours will it take you to, to walk that, to run it? Well, I hope it will take me around uh, 27 hours. But the fastest man, the record is uh, a bit more than 20 hours. But won't you sleep then, the whole race? Ah, no, I won't sleep. And what is it? Is it a runner's high or that you're walking in the mountain? What keeps you running? Everything. I, I like the sport. I like the nature. In the night, it's so nice just looking at the stars and uh, looking behind you and just seeing the lights of the other runners. It, it's just so nice. Of course, it's tough, but... Uh, I need something like that. It makes me alive. Onze Juliette neemt plaats in het startvak van de elite renners. Can you explain me what what's waiting for them? Physically, what are the hardships? I guess the first thing I want to say is that uh, in the end it's not that hard. I mean, it's uh, it's difficult for sure. You need to be very well prepared. But if you are well prepared, well rested, uh, it's uh, doable for almost anybody. That being said, of course, it's uh, it is difficult. Your muscles start to be painful. Uh, most likely, like for 50% or 40% of the runners, they will not feel well uh, in terms of a gastro gastrointestinal tract. So yeah, the, I would say nine, 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 yeah, feel, you feel sick and you feel like you want to vomit and you still have to, to keep uh, eating and drinking. So this is not a uh, pleasure for sure. Is it healthy to do this? I think it can be healthy or it can be unhealthy. It really depends how you do the, how you train, how much, how many races you do each year, how much time you take to recover. But if you are smart, if you are wise, I, I think you can, it can be healthy. Do you think personally that um, thousands of years ago we were used to less sleep, having periods of not eating, having periods of have to run because there was a bear or there was dryness? 
Is it? Is it? Can we do much more than we think? Because we were used to. Of course, and that's, fear and, and I guess that's what that's what I meant. What I I started the interview when I said this is doable for everyone. Because yeah, you just need to train, and I think we were born to run. This is this is this is true. Except that uh, that was uh, many 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 years ago, and people are not used to that anymore. And I I really be, be, believe that uh, you're right. Our ancestors, for them, the UTMB was nothing. De renners rennen de hele nacht door. En ik wacht in Courmayeur ochtends heel vroeg op Juliette. Zo'n 80 kilometer in de race. Eten, drinken, smeren en weer door. De Spaanse Pau Capel komt na 20 uur en 19 minuten over de finish. En na 24 uur, 34 minuten en 26 seconden finisht de Amerikaanse Courtney de Walter als eerste vrouw. Ik hang rond bij de finish, wachtend op Juliette. Die had al lang in Chamonix moeten zijn. Om 1 uur s'nachts zien we haar eindelijk. Vier uur nadat ze eigenlijk had willen finishen. Het was goed tot kilometer 120. En toen, de zon, had ik niet een hart covering de hele tijd. En de zon, ik bedoel, ik had een nederig en een hitstroke. Misschien, ik weet niet. Ja, ja. En alles was moving like that. Oh, really? And so I tried to, to stop a bit in uh, Champagne to eat and so on, but I, didn't, I could not recover, so I said, okay, I will finish uh, hiking. So you did all the rest hiking? Yeah. Oh, okay, but then you're still early. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know, but... Uh, uh, I saw, yeah, for you it's better if I finish for... Uh, for Guillaume, uh, for me, because I, 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 I hate uh, to give up. <laughs> but you still look pretty fresh. Is that, I mean, are you feeling okay now? Well, the thing is that I haven't eaten uh, since uh, 2 o'clock. Since 2 o'clock yeah, you haven't eaten? Yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> so I am quite kind of weak. <laughs> Juliette moet direct door naar het pop-up lab van Guillaume Mie. <laughs> Mie meet hier haar maximale kracht en vergelijkt die met die van voor haar race. Hij kijkt of de vermoeidheid meer uit haar hersenen of uit haar spieren komt. Zo test hij zijn hypothese dat vrouwen minder last hebben van neuromusculaire vermoeidheid. Are you satisfied with the results and the persons you tested so far? What the result I can tell. Uh, yes, because of course we are still testing and mm -hmm. we still have uh, 10 people from UTMB to come. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm a bit disappointed by the number of people who did not finish the UTMB so far. So we have a lot of uh, dropped out. <laughs> so we were supposed to have 20, 22 people at uh, the UTMB and already 10 dropped out. 10 dropped yeah, out? Yeah. How Which come? Actually it was uh, warm and uh, we know that the heat can be a problem as well for the DNF. So. Um, that's the field experiments, I guess, so we have to accept this is, uh, they did their best. And some of them actually told us that, yeah, we tried to finish for the experiment, but they just couldn't. But it's still possible for you to do the research you wanted to do, even with 12, 10 people? Yeah, because we have uh, shorter races as well, so over the whole week we'll have uh, probably close to 50 subjects, I guess, between 40 and 50. Okay. So overall it's still, uh, still uh, interesting. <laughs> 